Hey, welcome back to the place where energy matters. And in this video, I say goodbye to an old friend and I share how much off-grid energy has made a difference to my energy usage since 2020. So if you'd like to catch up on the Energy Matters series, it's currently being suggested in the top corner right now. Right, time to say goodbye to an old friend now. And if you have seen the video in this series where I covered off my dishwasher, the one that I rescued from a skip, I'm gonna cover that in the upcoming clip. This was filmed as part of another episode that hasn't been shown. Previously on Da Vinci. I've got a slimline dishwasher that I saved from a skip. Yes, I actually did that. So here it is about eight years on from its rescue. Yes, it still works. Yes, it's getting rusty. Yes, the tray's wheels have mostly fallen off, which means it's difficult to get things in and out. And unfortunately, it doesn't really clean properly in eco mode anymore, meaning I've got to use the highest setting, which is 65 degrees C. So it does use quite a bit of energy, but it still works. So the time came and it finally needed replacing. It typically used around 1.2 kilowatt hours per wash cycle, and that was at 65 degrees. So I looked for a slimline alternative. I ended up with the Becco as they offer good value and my fridge freezer has worked fine for many years. So after collecting up birthday and Christmas Amazon gift cards, and actually some that I found in the drawer from previous years, I managed to get the purchase price of £269 down to just £69. So the delivery itself went smooth enough until I removed all the packaging. And as you can see on screen, it actually had some impact damage to the left hand side. Now I didn't want all the hassle of actually returning it as it seemed to work fine. So I contacted the Amazon seller. So I got to test out their customer service and they gave me three options, a full refund, a replacement, or a partial refund of 30 pounds due to the damage. As it seemed to work okay, I took the partial refund. So I ended up with a brand new, slightly dented dishwasher for £39. I've got to give a shout out to Reliant Direct on Amazon. Anyway, enough chat, let's see how it fared on an eco wash. Right, so the energy monitoring plug now is zeroed out and ready to go. So I'm gonna run this on the 50 degree eco wash. Um, it's plugged into my MPP solar inverter, which you can probably hear in the background because the fans have kicked up to the next level because it's getting lots of solar in which is great so uh, let's switch it on now let's get over to the 50 degree wash and press play let's just check that's kicking in now as you can see the timer has started so we are ready to go and there we have it it's got the tick in the box meaning it's all done and dried nicely so let's see how much we've used so we've got uh, 0.81 of a kilowatt hour. So that's taken 331, as in three hours and 31 minutes. But again, most of that's in drying mode. So let's just see what the max amount of watts it drew. And there we have a, a nice uh, yearly number there. So it drew uh, 1967 watts. That was its maximum it used during the wash cycle. So a 2000 watt inverter on this is spot on. So saving around 0.4 of a kilowatt hour per wash is a decent result for me. This means that I pay less when I need to resort to using grid power and my battery power goes further when the sun has decided to turn up. So it's time to get down to business now and go over the results and how much energy I've used and how much off-grid energy has made a difference. So first up, I'm gonna start off with a few graphs which cover similar to the last results video, which is being suggested in the top corner right now. And then I'm gonna show you how much it's changed my energy uses since 2020. Right, electricity graph to start with. So this is the last four months of the year, as you can see, just comparing 2020 right through to 2022. So uh, the 2022 figures are pretty good, and that's mainly because of the five kilowatt hour battery being introduced and uh, slightly more solar capacity. Disappointing in November and December, a lot of rain in November and a lot of cloud in December. So the figure's not as good as I was hoping for for the sort of start of winter period there. So let's move on to gas. Right, so as you can see here, this is for the last four months of the year again. Uh, the scales are a little bit messed around, obviously, because I use a lot more in terms of kilowatt hours in November and December, because obviously heating kicks in there. And also uh, due to disappointing solar yields, I found I ended up using more gas because I couldn't use anything to cook 
uh, with energy that I'd got from solar. Interesting figures on there, November, very low for 2022, and that's mainly because it was warm and very wet. So it's, uh, the heating wasn't used very much on that. But the interesting figure for me was December actually used more in terms of kilowatt hours for uh, 2022 than I have done over the previous two years, as you can see. Uh, that was probably largely due to the fact it was very cold at the start of December. And also I had to use the uh, gas uh, cooker a lot more because I didn't have solar to compensate. But as you can see in September and October, the figures are down nicely on there. More so in October because the uh, solar yields are very good, meaning I could actually cut out a lot of the cooking that I was doing using the gas cooker. Right, as you can see, I've changed the graph type now so it's easier to read and I can actually track things easier on a month by month basis and cover off future update videos. But as you can see on here as well, 2022 in terms of electricity usage was down considerably uh, with the introduction of that new 5 kilowatt hour DIY battery and also uh, using the AC200P as well in conjunction with that. So uh, I had more solar available which obviously yields benefits and obviously reduced my baseline quite a lot. I mean there was June right through to October there which were didn't actually go over 50 kilowatt hours used for the month, which was incredible. I actually brought online the five kilowatt hour battery sometime between about mid to late Feb. So you'll start to see that drop on that start on that part of the graph there. And uh, going into 2023, as you can see as well, uh, even though it's been pretty poor in terms of solar, I've already started to cut down my usage compared to previous years quite significantly in some cases. So let's move on to gas. Right, gas usage graph now, and as you can see, it's a very consistent pattern for what I use generally. Uh, 2022 is a distinct improvement again, other than an anomaly month in 2020 when it was obviously warmer in the April and less heating was used. But in general terms, being able to cook using solar energy rather than the gas cooker has obviously improved things over the months where I wouldn't normally use uh, heating. And it also extends into 2023, as you can see, and Jan and Feb are also lower generally, other than my larger usage of um, gas in December, um, slightly more kilowatt hours as shown on one of the previous graphs. But generally, it's an improving picture and all this through being able to use more. And again, it's very much weather dependent. So let's see what we got down to on costs. Right down to the total costs now. So this is the full bill for each month. That includes standing charges, all energy used, and VAT. So this is the bottom line figure, rounded to the nearest pound. So as you can see, 2022 is where the price hike started to come in. We actually have March there. Looks like they all sort of melt into one. But uh, as you go into April, obviously that was the first price hike. And even though I used a lot less electricity and even some gas, the price still went up for obvious reasons. But generally, the setup that I've put in place has almost brought the figures or the monthly bill down throughout the year through May, June, July, August, September, right up to October, even sort of November time. It's almost kept the bill exactly the same as what I used to pay before the quite sizable price hikes. The real noticeable change on there, as you can probably see, is November and December when I started to use gas properly in terms of heating. And again, it's uh, the 2023 start has obviously shown as well that the, in, the cost or the amount of uh, increase in gas specifically, also electricity, has shot up. And the uh, baseline figure there of 217 for January and even 174 for February. Obviously, it's coming back down. I'm hoping that will come back down as the sun returns. But yeah, quite an interesting graph just showing the differences that those costs make, even though usage for 2022 and 2023 is down. So when it comes to sunshine over the winter period this time round, it's been a bit disappointing. Apart from the start of December, around mid-January and some pockets within February, it's not been very good for where I live in the south of the UK. But in general terms, it still does make a difference when it does shine and it does just bring my energy usage on the grid down a little bit. But hopefully things start to improve soon. So one important lesson I've learned over the last year, and as shown in the graphs you've just seen, is the more storage capacity that you have or can afford, the better. This really gives you the flexibility to actually use power when you need it, not just for backup purposes. 
So for me, I have solar power available. But if you don't have solar power available, perhaps you live in a flat or apartment or don't have that outside space, if you have access to a cheaper electricity tariff, you can actually fill it up and use it at a later date. But that really is the key for me and how I got my grid energy usage down. So I'm planning on doing a few battery builds this year and I might even venture into the first 48 volt battery seen on this channel. But what I will do is I will break down and just show you how I made the 24 volt 5 kilowatt hour battery just to give you an idea of how I actually put it together and then the uh, solar inverter that I use, the MPP solar inverter just to give you an idea of how you can put a system together yourself. But again, even if you don't have solar, you can still construct a battery and actually charge it and use it with an inverter if you do have access to a cheaper electricity source. So there you have it. Goodbye, old friend, and less grid energy used. If you do have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please pop them in the section below and I'll respond as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Da Vinci.